Hi, it's Dave of Roman Astro, and you're probably asking yourself, what does someone do in the heat of the Phoenix summer? Good question. There's actually a number of different things that we do. One of them, though, is upgrading existing equipment and purchasing new equipment. You know, we can't really photograph do astrophotography in the middle of the summer months, it just does not work. It's too hot and the heat is enough to significantly curtail any desires or attempts to go out when at 9 o'clock at night it's still like 105 degrees out. Like right now I'm looking and it's still 105 degrees out and it's oh, almost 8 o'clock. So it's pretty warm outside. So one of the things that one does is one upgrades existing equipment. Now, some of you may have known, and maybe you don't know, that I have a Las Mandy mount that I picked up for relatively cheap. And I'm going to go ahead and swing the camera around here so that you can see it. Now, this is an old mount. And actually, according to Tanya at, at Las Mandy, this guy was built in 1978 and it was built for Celestron. It's the Celestron version of the G11 mount. Uh, I don't know how many of these uh, Celestron purchased or sold through Las Mandy, but it's essentially, for all practical purposes, a G11 mount. They haven't really changed much and the, I don't know, almost, what, 30 years that they've been making these things uh, and so I decided that it was probably time to do some major upgrades to my mount and one of the things that I wanted done was to go with tucked in motors and spring loaded uh, worm drive right here which is spring loaded and it's been factory tested and of course with the spring load and the tucked in motors, you also get the RA extension kit, but I already had the RA extension kit, so that was not too big of a deal. But as you can see here, I've got my tucked in motors here and my new gearboxes and my spring loaded worms right there. And yeah, so I'm anxious to take this guy out and see what um, how she performs. Now, I have level 6 loaded on it on the uh, Gemini 2. So essentially, this mount, as it's configured right now, is essentially the same mount minus a slightly different base here that you would get if you bought a brand new uh, Lost Man DG 11. And so, you know, that's one of the things that I did this summer while waiting uh, for the heat to dissipate was do some well-deserved upgrades. And this is one of the most significant upgrades. I don't know if I'll see an improvement in guiding. I was already getting great guiding. I was already guiding anywhere from 0.4 to 0.7 on a good night, uh, which is really good for this mount. I suspect that I might be able to get a little bit better guiding, but uh, I'm not really expecting miracles. I'm expecting that I'll still be around 0.5 to 0.6, which would make me very, very happy. This is the mount that I use primarily for my RC6. And if my guiding does improve as much as I hope it does with all the upgrades that I've done, then I'll be able to use my 10 inch um, Newtonian on this puppy. Uh, that Newtonian comes in at 32 pounds without any camera equipment. By the time you load up all the camera equipment, you're up to close to 40 pounds by the time that you're done. And this mount is rated at 60 pounds. So I'm hoping that it will be able to handle that 10 inch Newtonian without without a hiccup. 
that's the thought anyways. Uh, the other thing that I did was I upgraded from the little hex screws to turning knobs here so that when I put this thing into its um, tripod base, it just pops on in and then I can just hand tighten instead of having to dig out my hex keys and having to um, tighten using the hex keys. Although it does have the hex key head so if I really wanted to tighten them up to be sure, I could always use the hex key head, but I suspect that hand tightening will be just fine. So that is my new, or my old new, um, Lost Mandy G11 mount with new upgrades from Lost Mandy. And it was a thrill to meet Scott Lost Mandy. Uh, he's the one that handed the mount back to me, all refurbished and recalibrated and everything good to go and working. It has a few minor dings, a few minor scrapes here, but what do you expect for something that is as old as it is? It's gonna have a few scratches here and there, but for the most part, this thing works pretty well. Another new piece of kit that I've actually picked up has been Rokinon 135, which a lot of people seem to be using these days. They seem to be picking them up. Now I had a 135 from back when I had a Canon camera and I kept the, the 135 because it's a great, it's a great focal length, used a lot in portraiture and stuff like that. And so that's what I'd gotten it for because uh, it opens all the way up to 2.0, makes for a great uh, lens and it also makes for a great astrophotography lens and so what I've gone ahead and done here and I'll just go ahead and turn this thing around is I picked up an astrodinium mounting kit here so that way uh, I can um, put an EAF focuser as well as um, a bar here so that I could uh, mount a uh, guide camera which I've got right here this is my 120mm mini guide camera and again this is the Rokinon 135 great great lens and of course I put a Pegasus Astro uh, Powerbox mini on here and I've actually got right now a Melee Quieter 2 uh, mini PC to run this thing running Nina and for my main acquisition camera here I've got the ASI uh, 071 MC Pro and I'll use this thing obviously for wide field shots and I know that I want to get um, several different wide field shots in my planning uh, one of those is going to be Bernard's Loop, which is in the Orion area and basically goes all the way from uh, Beetlejuice, just north of Beetlejuice, and it goes all the way down and swings around almost over to the uh, Witch Head Nebula. And it's a huge ring of hydrogen gas. And in all of that, you have get, of course, the Orion Nebula, the Horse Head, the Flame, um, I think you even get um, Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula, and there's a bunch of other uh, nebulae in there in that mix that you can go ahead and you can pick up uh, using a wide angle. And so it will be a mosaic, of course, and I'll do a mosaic of probably six different images, and it'll probably take me several nights to do it in color and then to do it again in HA, but that's what I will do. But that's what this guy here is for. This guy here is for doing large scale uh, wide angles or large scale mosaics. And this is the one that has Vixen bar right there that I'm probably gonna have to replace with Lost Mandy um, because my G11 will not take a Vixen. I can do a Vixen on my EQ6R Pro, 
and so I could run this thing on my EQ6R Pro if I wanted to, but I generally keep that for the AT80 EDT, which is like my workhorse. That's my workhorse telescope. So those are some of the new pieces of equipment that I've got coming that I can't wait, that I can't wait to try out my new color 2600 not a 2600 but the imx 571 sensor camera that's color that's on my rc6 um, i can't wait to try it out and get give it first light and i've got my new little Roki setup here which i can't wait to actually use and then of course i've got my upgraded lost man dg11 so those are just some of the things that i've upgraded and that I've worked on over the course of the summer. So what does one do when it's hot outside? Well, one refurbishes their equipment and one buys new things to go and play with. So what do you do when it gets too hot out to do astrophotography? So until next time, Happy guiding in clear skies.